Welcome 8th grade. Misleading graphs and statistics. Things to watch out for because you can really make a lot of things seem like what you want them to think, seem like if you mislead with your graphs or you use, st use statistics in a twisted way. So, warm up. How many students like oranges? Hopefully you can read a bar graph and you see oranges goes all the way up to 40, so we know that 40 students like oranges. All right, what is the least liked fruit? See that kiwis are lowest at 10, so they're least liked. And how many students answered the survey? Well, if we would take all the numbers from each group and add them together, we would get our total of 90 students. All those are things to think about and know how to do. Problem of the day, we did well. Recognize misleading graphs and statistics. Now, when we put items out, we can make things seem very in our favor or against our opponent by maybe misleading them a little bit. I don't see any numbers. I don't see, I see a before and after, but we don't have all the items out there, but it looks like a pretty good selling point. Graphs and statistics are often used to make advertisements visually appealing. Some advertisements, however, use art to mislead consumers because they're all about selling product, not giving you the best item at times. So why would this graph be misleading? So as we look, we go from 2002 to 2004 to 2006 to 2008, kind of a steady, gradual increase. But if we look, this first section, 10, 10, then 2, and 2. So while in the first year, first two years it grew by 5, second two years it grew by like 6, the next year it only grew like 2. But it looks like it's the same increase because the intervals represent different amounts. You shouldn't be doing that, therefore that is misleading because the intervals have different amounts. Here, explain why each graph is misleading. Soup donated. Puffs donated. Cases donated. All right. We look at these. One can of soup equals 100 cans. One box equals 50 boxes. One case equals 20 cases. So while it looks like soup narrowly had more donations, than puffs, and puffs narrowly had more than cases. Well, if we think about it, each of these is 100, so that's 600. Each of these is 50, so that's 250. And each of these is 20, so that's 80. Those numbers really are quite different because what each symbol represent, or the amount that each symbol represented, that's um, misleading. The icons represent different quantities and are of different sizes. We look at this one. So we see all things are the same size. We gain by 10 each time here. We gain by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 there. All right. Percent of return on investments. Why might this be misleading? All right. Well, let's look at what they say. Ooh, projected. That asterisk there means they don't actually know what's going to happen in year five and year six. They're projecting it based on previous numbers, and they projected it based on the two years of biggest gains. So the graph suggests that the rate of investment return will continue to increase, but there are no guarantees. Crazy things like the coronavirus can come up and you can see your stock portfolio go down. All right. Explain why each graph is misleading. 140, 142, 144, 148, or 46, 48, 150. They all grow by two each and every time. All right. That seems very good. That seems very right. So <clears throat> we look at our amounts, 148, 144, and 142. Not much difference between them. 
four more grapes than there are cherries, six more grapes than there are apples, two more cherries than there are apples. But my big problem with this is, if I take this green one and I come over here, more than two of these apples will fit in there. So it looks like grapes has got more than double what apples does. And the reason for that, that guy right there. Because we skipped the first 100, we only see the difference in the last little bit here. And therefore that six is exaggerated very much. If we would go all the way down and continue on, we'd see that those three graphs all grow and all are 140 plus. But here it looks like we have twice as many grapes as we have apples or even a little bit more. Because of this, and we only show this top portion, we can make it look like there's many more of these than these when that is not really the case. The graph appears to indicate the sig or significantly more people prefer grape drink over others when in fact there's a small margin of difference. The 0 to 140 is not graphed and that's what makes this appear like a great difference rather than a small difference. All right, so 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120. Brand X, brand Y, brand Z. Why is this graph misleading? Okay, It doesn't look like there's much difference between all of these. But if we think about the numbers, that is a 7, sorry, 70, 40, and 35. We can see that brand Y actually sold significantly more than brand X and was double that of brand Z. Brand Y is much, has much more in sales, but because of the way they presented the graphs with the 20 in each increment, it doesn't look like a big difference. Something better might be like five for each increment, and then you would show just how much better drink Y or brand Y sells. The graph is too compressed to see much difference between the brands indicated. They look fairly equal, but they are not. All right. Oh, the no data from 50 to 120. We don't really need all this extra space, so we should have made our intervals less amount, so we filled it up. Explain why each statistic is misleading. Four out of five dentists surveyed preferred ultra clean toothpaste. Let's let them explain their reasoning and we'll see if we can pick it up here in a bit. This statement does not give the sample size or state that ultra clean toothpaste was what, was what it was compared with. So four out of five sounds very good. But what about 80 out of 100? Those are equal. Seems like you have a lot more people disagreeing that Ultra is not the best. Shopping at Save-A-Lot can save you up to $100 a month. The words save up to $100 mean the maximum you can save is $100, but there is no guarantee that you will save that amount. If you shop there four times a week, yeah, probably going to get to that amount. But if you only shop there once a week, you may not. So, they don't give those specifics or those details. Why is this statistic misleading? Sam scored 43 goals for his soccer team during the season, and Jacob only scored 10. A reporter claims that Sam is a better player than Jacob. Well, sports-minded people, let's see if you agree. Although Jacob scored only 10 goals, he may have played most of his time on defense. If he's a um, defender, he's not going to be up near the goal, so he may have a very important job or role, but doesn't get the opportunity to score many goals. Four out of five breeders recommend pet blend dog food for a healthier coat. Again, do they tell what we're comparing it to? All right, do we know the sample size? Those are two things that again come up. Fruity Squares makes the cereal 100% more fun. 100% more fun than what? You cannot measure fun. 
The total revenue for bathing suits sold in May at Woolworths Florida stores is $250,000. The total revenue for bathing suits sold in May at Woolworths North Dakota stores is $10,000. Those are facts. But here's why it's that. The states have very different populations now and very different climates. There's much less need for um, bathing suits in North Dakota in May. You probably have to wait till June or July to swim. Whereas in Florida, in May it's getting very hot and they have a much bigger population. So we have to think about those things. You're ready to move on? Don't be tricked.